talk about Swachh Bharat and sanitation, there is a need to go beyond just construction of toilets and think where the human waste goes after we use a toilet. Fecal sludge management has been called the missing and ignored component of the sanitation sector. With India just having barely 30% sewage lines, where is the daily dump going? Today on our show, we take you through how misuse of human excrement that must count as one of the modern world's worst but least discussed resource failures. It's turning rivers into cesspools, destroying soils, harming human health, damaging food supplies and wrecking water supplies. Currently, news headlines are all about the tragedy in Gorakhpur, where 60 children died in the main hospital in a matter of five days. While this horror has caught national attention, and there's a blame game underway amongst authorities. For decades, Gorakhpur has experienced an annual outbreak of the deadly Japanese encephalitis. This season, a mosquito-borne disease that affects children the worst. While this virus may have originated from pigs, at the heart of the crisis is the lack of the infrastructure in the area and the lack of access to clean drinking water and toilets. But even though other areas in the country may not see this particular deadly disease at epidemic proportions, there are several other diseases that spread in our towns and villages because of a lack of proper sanitation. No more than 30% of sewage generated by 377 million people flows through treatment plants. Sewage is randomly dumped in rivers, seas, lakes and wells, polluting three-fourths of the country's water bodies. There is an urgent need to build greater momentum around a broader understanding of what will make India truly swatch. Simple infrastructure creation will not single-handedly propel us towards the government's target of making India open defecation free by 2019. Construction of toilets will and must continue. But to move forward, we have to move away from merely the provision of toilets to toilets that are used, maintained and where all human waste is safely treated and disposed. This is why we must talk about the management of fecal sludge. This is sludge collected from on-site sanitation systems such as latrines, non-sewered public toilet septic tanks. Fecal sludge management includes emptying, transportation, treatment and the use or disposal of sludge from an on-site sanitation technology like a pit latrine or septic tank. Though we would say once the Swachh Bharat mission is successful, we can say India is open defecation free. But I would say we are still defecating because these tanks will be de somewhere in the open in the ground, somewhere in the river. So you are just saving the problem for some time, but the problem still remains. You are still defecating in the open. So if we don't talk about fecal sludge treatment and reuse at the same time when we are giving toilets to people, we are still in a mess. Fecal sludge management is one of the key elements of the overall citywide sanitation value chain. Rampant disposal of fecal sludge into open drains, non-scientific methods of its disposal and weak regulations has led to pollution of water. The latest Central Pollution Control Board has estimated that over 73% of all fecal sludge generated in the country is left untreated in the environment in India. The worst example of this apathy is the National River, the Ganga, which is in crisis. How do we explain to ourselves the abuse of a river that's worshipped so fervently? That is the paradox of India and the Ganga today, a confluence of faith and filth. The 50 cities along the Ganga barely have a functional sewage system and dump untreated waste water directly into the river. The, the management of sewage is a big issue for India. A few months back, I visited a sewage handling plant in Varanasi at the, at the Ganga River, uh, and they're doing gr great efforts to, to cl clean up the Ganga through, through these sewage uh, ha handling plants. But of course, a lot more of this is needed. 
uh, and here I think also uh, India can tap into experience from other parts of the world which have very successfully been able to handle, handle, handle sewage. So please learn from others, uh, but please also India move forward with, with this because the sewage is also at the end of the day a resource which can be used uh, for driving buses uh, or for agriculture, for farming, uh, so it should not be wasted. Ideally, the sludge collected should first be treated and then either disposed of according to the standards prescribed under the Environment Protection Act of 1986 or reused as fuel, soil conditioner or filling material depending on the treatment method. In reality, most of the fecal sludge collected from septic tanks is dumped into rivers, drains and sewers or emptied untreated into agricultural fields and low-lying areas. The levels of fecal coliform that comes from excreta is unacceptable in many stretches of the Ganga, making it a carrier of waterborne diseases. It's no wonder the river has alarmingly high levels of fecal coliform, which is a massive health hazard as it leads to various waterborne diseases like diarrhea, cholera and typhoid. The state is abysmal across all water bodies in the country. Water is the key to health. Please understand. Water Polluted water today kills more babies than anything in this country. The fact is that we have more open defecation in this country than anywhere else. So all this is part of pollution. You know, cleaning up India is not about one thing. It is about all this. And water is key to life. We have a drought all the time. We, have a, we are a water-scarce nation. Now, what kind of policy is it that in a water-scarce nation, you pollute your water. Damage to public health can be almost as severe even when everyone is using a toilet if the waste produced is not safely treated and disposed. The waste with its disease-carrying pathogens is often piped into ditches, dumped into fields, or released into rivers and the sea. Unsurprisingly, the consequences are continuing high rates of illness. 38,000 million litres of sewage is generated every day, while the existing treatment capacity is for about 12,000 MLD in all metropolitan cities, which means India has only about 32% of sewage treated. Most of our sewage treatment plants are severely underutilized due to the absence or partial functionality of sewerage networks. A large number of the cities and towns either do not have any sewerage system or the system is overloaded or defunct. Sewer networks do not reach the homes of many of the nation's inhabitants. And even when they connect, the sewage is rarely treated before being discharged into the natural environment. There are many challenges faced by the country to achieve a successful fecal sludge management system. In 2014, WaterAid did a national level study on fecal sludge management covering about six states, which revealed that about 70 to 80 percent of our surface water bodies are basically polluted from fecal matter. There is a huge number of sewage treatment plants that does not uh, conform to the environmental standards for treatment and therefore a lot of waste goes uh, semi-treated or half-treated kind of into the uh, you know rivers or wherever I want to say it finds this place. But then there is another problem and that problem is much bigger. The problem is that any sewage treatment plant needs to have enough amount of sewage to uh, effectively run on its designed capacity. So most of them, uh, because we uh, have, cons have constructed sewage treatment plants, but at the same time and in the same pace, we have not been able to extend the sewage networks to the unsevered areas of the city. And therefore, its operation is affected and therefore that results into a situation like you are referring that 39% uh, uh, of the STPs uh, are not conforming to the environmental standards set by CPCB.